Last week on the Cruiserweight Classic, the first round of the 16-man tournament commenced. NXT standout Dragon Lee clashed with the LWO's Cruz Del Toro in an exciting Lucha Libre battle. Del Toro put forth a valiant effort, but was caught in a blink of an eye by the Dragon. Then, TNA Wrestling's Zachary Wentz met SmackDown's Nathan Frazier, who was looking to recreate his success of last year's tournament. In a matchup that wowed the audience and set the standard for the entire tournament, Nathan Frazier would secure his spot in the quarterfinal round. Now, it's time to see who's next to step up. Former champion in Akira Tozawa meets NXT's young OG, Javon Evans. Plus, two first round knockouts in last year's tournament. Look to find better luck this year when Wesley faces off against Axiom. It's the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic, and it continues right now. We are back here in Midtown Manhattan, approaching the Hammerstein Ballroom inside the Manhattan Center for your second week of the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Some great action last week, but now we are here once again for the action to commence in mere moments. Let us take a look at the bracket thus far. Dragon Lee and Nathan Frazier signed on for the quarterfinals in a few weeks' time. We look towards the next half as Akira Tozawa meets Javon Evans and Axiom takes on Wesley this Sunday afternoon live here at the Cruiserweight Classic. And we are getting right down to the action inside the prestigious Hammerstein Ballroom. Making his way to the ring from Kobe, Japan. Weighing in at 156 pounds, Akira Tozawa. Akira Tozawa representing Thursday Night SmackDown in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic was bounced out of the first round last year by Johnny Gargano. But as you can see, Tozawa has competed in all three Cruiserweight Classic tournaments, and he's looking to make his third outing his most successful one this Sunday afternoon. Cannot discount the power of Tozawa, a former Cruiserweight champion, 19-year veteran in this industry, and he certainly has the leg up against the young OG from NXT in Javon Evans. But don't discount the man that Tozawa battles tonight as this young man has got all the potential. And his opponent from Greensboro, North Carolina, weighing in at 170 pounds, Jay Von Evans. I am not sure there has been a young man who has made such waves like Javon Evans has in the history of WWE. Just showing up in NXT last year has already made waves and been inside the squared circle with some of the best that that, that that brand, excuse me, has to offer. Javon Evans signing with the WWE at only 19 years old, enters this tournament at only 20 years old. Javon has already held the world championship at Deadlock Pro Wrestling, but now in the biggest industry there is, WWE, he looks to start down the road of winning the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Javon Evans, young yet full of potential. But can he get through the veteran in Akira Tozawa as we continue on with the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament? Bell has sounded. We are underway for this interpromotional battle between Tozawa and Evans. SmackDown versus NXT here on your Sunday afternoon. Tozawa striking while the iron's hot. Javon Evans. The size advantage over Akira, but Zawa has showed over the 19 years he has spent inside that squared circle that size does not matter at times. Very familiar with chopping superstars. Down to size as he just outsmarts Javon Evans that time. 
gets him trapped into the corner, unloads with some strikes. Tazawa knows how to let him fly. Javon Evans all about leaving his feet. They don't say that boy is bouncy for no reason. And here he goes, standing moonsault. Javon Evans looking for a breakout performance in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. We've seen what this tournament has done to many of superstars over the years. Just last year, Ilya Dragunov winning the whole thing. You fast forward 12 months, Dragunov certainly one of the faces of Thursday Night SmackDown. Look at a guy like Nathan Frazier, who you of course saw in action last week here. Did not win the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament last year, but was so impressive that he went on the side with SmackDown nonetheless. Could be an opportunity that awaits Javon Evans. All remains to be seen what his result will be here in the CWC. Evans may be young, yet full of potential, but these are the opportunities that matter most. This is where Javon has a chance to shine and show that he belongs, but Akira Tozawa is not gonna make it easy for him. As we mentioned, Akira Tozawa has now competed in all three Cruiserweight Classic tournaments, 2016, 2023, and now 2024. And as he sends Javon Evans to the outside, it is a reminder that Akira Tozawa is looking for his best performance yet. Over the top rope goes Tozawa. Javon Evans may be known for taking things to the air, but so is Akira Tozawa, one of the many strengths in his playbook. Once again, impactful Frankensteiner taking Javon Evans down to the canvas, hustles up into the pinfall here. Evans still in this match. Talked about a few minutes ago as well, how Akira Tozawa, former cruiserweight champion, that was several years ago. Tozawa also very decorated in the Dragon Gate promotion over the years. Looking for some success here in the CWC, and I'll bite so far so good against Javon Evans on this Sunday afternoon. Javon has got to make sure that the pressure of the spotlight is not too much to handle. Certainly the biggest spotlight he has ever been under in his career here in the Cruiserweight Classic. And although he has had some outings with some of the best NXT has to offer, the CWC has proven to be a catalyst for success here in the WWE. Javon Evans looking to use it to the most advantage this Wednesday, or I should say this Sunday afternoon. Got Tazawa down on the canvas right now. This is what Evans is, dare I say, Smartest decision he can make. Loves to take things to the air, but he's got Akira Tozawa down and out. Why not try to keep him there? Wait a minute, spin kick, my goodness. Something very similar that Tozawa usually institutes. Javon Evans looking to beat him at his own game. And a nice springboard that time. The young OG over the top rope as Akira Tozawa was looking up with the lights. Javon just made it with that crossbody splash. Javon Evans showing some intestinal fortitude here at the Cruiserweight Classic. Showing he is gutsy, showing he is resilient, and showing he is willing to do anything it takes to advance to the quarterfinals of this tournament. Oh, man. Well, to get down and dirty, break things down to a brawl if need be. Send it to Zawa right into those diamond-plated steps. Five. Referees at a count of five. Javon Evans may have an opportunity to just go for a count out here. Six. Certainly wouldn't be the most exciting way to end this thing. Well, hold on, Evans got something else in mind. Off the top with an elbow to the outside. From the young OG, Javon Evans driving his elbow into the heart of a former Cruiserweight Champion. Tozawa looking up at the lights two times in a row just to see Javon Evans coming into the line of fire. And now Evans hustling up now into the cover. And damn near almost had this matchup won, but Tozawa still into it. I'll tell you, if Javon was ever gonna play catch up, that series of maneuvers to the outside of the ring was certainly a way to do so. 
especially after Akira Tozawa had really set the precedent in the early part of this matchup. It is the young OG who is starting to take over over the veteran, goes for the springboard moonsault. Nobody home in the delivery. Now Tozawa, all of a sudden, with Evans up against the ropes, goes underneath of the much larger individual. Nice head scissors takedown. Tope Suicida shot out like a cannon. And all of a sudden, it is Akira Tozawa who is back into this matchup. Javon Evans may be in trouble. Poison Raya! To advance to the quarters. Javon Evans gets the shoulder up. Another gutsy showcase there by the young OG. Evans sent to the corner. Tozawa full head of steam. Realizing that Javon may be surviving, but he certainly isn't thriving. Evans is rocked. Tozawa knows it. Tozawa cannot let the pageantry of the moment soak into his brain, take his eyes off the ball. Javon Evans gonna try to rally here. Tozawa on the other hand, around and around we go. Sunset flip into the pinfall. Almost helped, caught him that time. Evans able to pop the shoulder up, but clearly he's starting to show fatigue. He's always instituted a lot of major offense throughout this matchup. Evans, credit where credit's due, surviving. There's another counter there by Tozawa. And there's the veteran experience, just allowing the young and naive Javon Evans to come to him. And now Tozawa on top. Caught Evans momentarily. He's on spaghetti legs. Oh, wow, is that a headbutt? I believe it was. Tozawa going for a knockout blow. On the standing, Javon Evans. Talk about a way to get your opponent off his feet. Tozawa literally using his own body as a weapon, throwing caution in the wind. There's Evans putting the, putting the brakes on, we should say, blocking Tozawa's offense. Insiguri, shining wizard, whatever you want to call it. Javon Evans' lights have got to be turned off. But the young OG continues to fight. Tozawa throwing everything he can think of in his arsenal to try to keep down the 20-year-old representative from NXT. But this young man is clearly built different. Akira Tozawa, the veteran, may be racking his brain trying to figure out what he's got to do to keep this young competitor down. Evans rolling the hell out of dodge that time, sends Tozawa into the ropes. What a kick of his own! Now or never, in my point of view, for Javon to get back into this. Wow, what a double stomp! That is why they say this young man stays feeling bouncy. You see the way he used the ropes to get the extra adrenaline, the extra oomph on that double stomp. Kira Tozawa looks like he's seen better days. Now it's Javon Evans who's trying to find that window of opportunity that's not only to get momentum back on his side, but he's gonna have Tozawa looking up at the lights of Hammerstein Ballroom once more. See, he's not going fancy here. Just keeping things simple and effective. You gotta commend that out of the young, and as we mentioned a few moments ago, sometimes naive competitor. Nice snap, Mayor. Akira Tozawa taken out on the canvas. And Tozawa may be in trouble. Javon Evans going to the top. The boy is feeling bouncy. Into the cover. Javon's on his way to the quarterfinals. Here is your winner, Evans. Well, the 19-year veteran in Akira Tozawa, upset by the only 20-year-old Javon Evans in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. An amazing showcase by the young OG from NXT who now finds himself on his way to the next round, the quarterfinals of the CWC. Javon joins Nathan Frazier and Dragon Lee in the upcoming round, but who will meet him there? Will it be a Axiom or will it be Wesley? We find out coming up next here in Manhattan.
after no mercy is shown and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way, live on Saturday night, October 19th, from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel membership proudly present WWE Bad Blood. We are less than two weeks away until our trip to Boston where the hell in a cell will be lowered as the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes defends the World Heavyweight Championship against the Apex Predator, Randy Orton. Something's gotta give. These two men step inside Devil's Playground. And what a one-two punch it's gonna be at Bad Blood. The WWE title will be on the line courtesy of Monday Night Raw. The Second City Saint, CM Punk, is gonna get back the gold he lost at no mercy as he meets the phenomenal AJ Styles. That is all coming up at Bad Blood on the 19th, but what about next Sunday afternoon, right back here in Midtown Manhattan? The first round of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament will continue as TNA Wrestling's Jonathan Gresham looks to out-wrestle SmackDown's Alpha Academy leader, Chad Gable. And speaking of a TNA representative, a legend of that brand, Frankie Kazarian will be here in Hammerstein Ballroom as he goes one-on-one -on -one with the Latino World Order's Joaquin Wilde. The first round of the CWC continues live next Sunday afternoon. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of Universe Mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how Universe Mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member and get your front row seat to more Universe than ever before. We are back inside the hallowed halls of Hammerstein Ballroom. And it is time for your final first round match of the Cruiserweight Classic, at least for this Sunday afternoon. Still so much more action to come in this great tournament. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Dayton, Ohio. Weighing in at 183 pounds, Wesley. Well, Wesley hoping to have better luck than his friend Zachary Wentz did last week here at the Cruiserweight Classic. And Lee looking to have better luck than he did last year here in the CWC. Lee was a first round knockout in last year's tournament. Bounced by Nathan Frazier who has already punched his ticket to the quarterfinals as you saw last week. Nathan Frazier, of course, will meet one half of the new WWE Tag Team Champions in Dragon Lee in just a few weeks time in the quarterfinals. As for Wesley and or Axiom, the winner of this matchup on their way to go one-on-one -on -one with Javon Evans in the quarterfinals. And just as Wesley is looking for a different result than 12 months ago, so is this man. Axiom bounced last year by the inevitable winner, Ilya Dragunov. Now these two men back in the fold, a part of the 16-man tournament, but who will punch their ticket to the quarters? And his opponent from Madrid, Spain, weighing in at 154 pounds, Axiom! Well, you know, it's been some time since Axiom's been in consistent singles action. It's been a lot of time teaming up with Nathan Frazier over the last few months on SmackDown. Axiom's got to feel good knowing Frazier's already punched his ticket to the quarterfinals. Will Axiom be joining him? That is the question we await an answer to. 
Hell, if those two gentlemen are really lucky, or maybe you should say unlucky, they could end up beating each other in the semifinals of this tournament. Don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. All remains to be seen if Axiom's even going to be able to get past the first round this year. Well, one of these men is going to break the curse of last year's tournament. They were both bounced in the first round 12 months ago. Inevitably, somebody's got to move on as they meet in the first round this year. Wesley and Axiom going at it. Wesley, as we mentioned, not looking to have the same fate in his old tag team partner and good friend Zachary Wentz did last week. Wentz going down in a blaze of glory, absolutely. Incredible matchup with Nathan Frazier here at the Cruiserweight Classic, but Wesley is looking to get his hand raised this Sunday afternoon in Midtown Manhattan. Coming hot out of the gate on Axiom. Let's see if Lee's gonna be able to keep this momentum up. I don't know what he was going for there. Maybe a cannonball, maybe a blockbuster, but Axiom read it like a playbook. Axiom's got a little bit of versatility in his arsenal. Loves to take things to the air, absolutely, but will ground and pound on his opponents if need be. Superstar all the way from Spain. We're gonna finally start making a real impact on SmackDown, and he could do so in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Going for the early cover, I think Axiom knew he wasn't going to get the pinfall that time. He's forcing Wesley to expend a little bit of energy. Off the Inseguri, Lee go to the outside, and Axiom throwing his own body into the wind. Skyward here in Manhattan. Looking like a blue suit Spider-Man out there. Shooting storm press on the outside of the ring. Well, just like we said, Axiom not afraid to leave the soles of his boots and isn't afraid to get his hands dirty either. We're seeing a little bit of everything out of Axiom ever since he turned the tables. Wesley tried to be the aggressor off the opening bell and Axiom has completely denied him that satisfaction. This battle making its way to the outside of the ring here in Midtown Manhattan as Wesley now sent back inside the squared circle. Axiom may have an opportunity for an early pinfall. Alexa against it, at least for now. Axiom heading to the top rope once again. Looking to go skyward. Once again, Wesley is going down courtesy of Axiom. Beautiful arm drag followed by the moonsault. Axiom has got one goal in mind, and that's his foot on the gas pedal and going as fast as he can. Whatever he's got to do to ensure a different result than 2023 when his lights were turned off by the man dragging Ilya Dragunov. Axiom is all over Lee. The versatility of maneuvers. We've definitely seen Wesley in better positions, and we're going to see him in another one right there. Sidestep, tilt to world, DDT, down goes Axiom momentarily. This is the high octane, high flying, high risk, high reward action that was promised in the Cruiserweight Classic. Another tilt to world. Drop an Axiom right on his crown. Lee now meets him in the corner with an uppercut. Wesley saying, anything you can do, I can do better. Springboard stunner! And now it's Lee, who is going 100 miles a minute. Only on one count that time, referee Chad Patton from SmackDown calling the action between these two SmackDown superstars. Axiom struggling to get to his feet after an early onslaught by both men. You may see this matchup slow down just a bit. Only so many minutes of a contest that you can extend so much energy and continue to go, go, go. At some point, your body's going to give. And an air fall that time. You see Wesley's sense of urgency doing all he can to ensure his shoulder was not on the canvas for a count of three. Oh my goodness! Axiom relying on familiar maneuvers in this matchup, and I don't think he gives a damn as long as it's effective. Sending West Lee to the ropes. Maybe trying to slow things down, but I don't know if Lee's gonna give him what he wants. 
starting to unload. Float over into the bridge. Not done just yet. Lee's looking to make it a dose. Into the cover this time. Only, I don't even think he got a one that time. Impressive maneuver nonetheless. Wesley now has got Axiom up against the ropes. And this is where Axiom may find himself in trouble. Lee with fire underneath his feet. Wow, what a maneuver over the top. Leaving no stone unturned here in Midtown Manhattan. Axiom on the outside. Holy hell, Wesley with a springboard cutter down the ringside. Wesley reaching deep down on the bag of tricks to try to ensure his exit from the first round and his entrance into the quarterfinals. Off the springboard, into the cover. Will this be all she wrote? Not just yet, Axiom gets the shoulder up again. Incredible offense that time by the cardiac kid, Wesley. Axiom looking worse for wear, that's for damn sure. Might have got his shoulder up, but how much is realistically left in the tank after such physically demanding maneuvers on both sides of the ring? Now Axiom brought to the top. Wesley. Frankensteiner! My goodness! And Axiom in the drop zone. Lee feeling froggy. Frog splash. How? How is this one not over? The Flosberry flopped to the outside, followed by the springboard cutter. And you add the Frankensteiner, the frog splash, and yet somehow Axiom is still in this matchup and is actually continuing to fight. And now it's got Lee on his shoulders. A precarious situation. Axiom realizing he's got to play catch up. A sense of urgency out of this main drum superstar. Wesley, all kinds of tied up. Has Axiom caught him with the submission hold. Trying to do anything he can to slow down the cardiac kid. Wesley trying to fight, not looking to see a first round exit two years in a row. A little bit of distance created. Wesley misses wildly, and a thrust kick right to the jawline. Knockout blow any day of the week, twice on Sunday, maybe not. Lee still smelling the coffee. The action as hot as the freshly brewed here on this Sunday afternoon. And just like that, Wesley, the one who's looking worse for wear. Wesley looking like he's been through a car wreck. Axiom in the driver's seat. Two weeks in a row, we have got barn burners here in Midtown Manhattan. Lee getting the knees up. Goes around, wait a minute. Oh, creative inside cradle. Trying to steal the victory, almost had Axiom. Lack of days ago is all hell, but a shoulder up nonetheless. Nice disc his forearm that time. Clearly Wesley is starting to throw anything he can, whether it's fists, whether it's uppercuts, whether it's forearms, just trying to knock Axiom's lights out for good. Set in the corner. Axiom going for a drop kick. Reversal that time. Wesley trying to turn his sights to the buckles. Not sure what he had in mind that time. Now it's Axiom stopping him. Dead in his tracks. Into the bridge. This one's not over yet. On the top. Shooting star press. The action, non-stop, here in Hammerstein Ballroom. Goes for the press. Arabian press off the moonsault. Does not hit. Wesley counters. The action a mile a minute, here at the Cruiserweight Classic. It may just come down to who wants it more. Who's got enough left in the tank? Who's gonna continue to fight? 
Axiom sent to the outside momentarily. Wesley hot on his tail. Axiom getting crushed. And now Wesley dragging his carcass back inside the ring. Heading to the top. Wheels are a spinning. And drop kick. Lands on the button. Oh, wait a minute. Inside cradle ball Axiom. Axiom going to steal the victory here. No. Nathan Frazier, Dragon Lee, Javon Evans, the three superstars who have already punched their ticket to the quarterfinals. Wesley and Axiom, after tasting defeat in the first round last year, not looking to do so again, looking to join the names in the quarterfinals that have already advanced. I believe Wesley may have been cut open above the eye at some point. I don't think that was intentional by Axiom. I'm honestly not sure when that happened here, but Wesley is going to be smelling some blood. That is not going to go well for his longevity in this matchup. I mean, we already are in championship rounds here. Fatigue already going to be playing a factor as these two men are throwing live rounds. Axiom with a takedown. Make it a dose. And down he goes again. Axiom into the pinfall. Will that do it? It is not over yet. Man, oh man, what is it gonna take to see a result here in Midtown Manhattan? Double springboard blockbuster. Believe that was the maneuver that Wesley was looking for at the top of this matchup. Into the kick. Down goes Axiom again. Roll to the outside, trying to get some R&R, &R, create a little distance. Lee, however, closing the gap. Springboard shooting star press to the outside of the ring. My goodness. Axiom crushed at ringside by a flying Wesley. And now the Cardiac Kid headed back to the top rope. Could we go for a little spiral tap? right on the spine of Axiom. Into the cover. And finally, we can put on the brakes. This race to the finish line ends with Wesley outlasting Axiom in one hell of a battle. Nothing to be ashamed of in defeat. An unfortunate loss in the first round for Axiom, but you gotta give it up for his effort, and you gotta tip your cap to the Cardiac Kid. Here is your winner, Wesley. Wesley now completes the left side of the first round of the bracket. Lee will meet Javon Evans in the quarterfinals in a couple of weeks' time here in Midtown Manhattan. But we look forward to next week as the first round continues. Chad Gable representing SmackDown and one of the best technical wrestlers around the globe, Jonathan Gresham representing TNA Wrestling. And speaking of total nonstop action, a legend of the franchise, Frankie Kazarian takes on Latino World Order's representative in Joaquin Wild. The first round has been off the charts two weeks in a row, and it continues right back here next Sunday afternoon, live at 12 noon Eastern time. But as for this Sunday, Wesley proving that it's a marathon, not a sprint. He outlasts Axiom and looks forward to his challenge in NXT's Javon Evans in a few weeks' time. Thank you for joining us here in Midtown Manhattan, and we'll see you live next Sunday afternoon.